Greetings, it's the New York Thrifter here. And for a while now, I've been debating whether or not to do vlog style videos here on YouTube. And I've decided to give it a go. For the next couple of weeks, um, each weekday, hopefully, I'll be uh, posting a vlog on YouTube just to see what the response from you guys is. This is my first day and I only have three sales over the weekend. This is a Monday and I'm showing you my three sales here. And honestly, that's pretty sad. Um, however, I'm starting almost from zero back on eBay. I stopped listing the end of December around Christmas. The family was doing some traveling and then there was some illnesses and I just never really got back into posting on eBay. I'm down to under 200 listings. It's really been pretty much crickets, which you would expect for not listing. So I've decided to really ramp up what I'm doing to see how I can maximize my profits on eBay. I have huge piles of clothes to list and so now's the time to do it. So first off the sales during the weekend. I sold a logo by Lori Goldstein top for $16.99 plus $2.99 in shipping. A loft linen t-shirt for $8.99 free shipping. And a woman's within orange tie-dye plus size dress. And I went through kind of a plus size phase where I decided to get any plus size I could find for under $4 and list it to see what would happen. Uh, this dress went for $16.99 uh, plus $2.99 in shipping. Total, not including the fees and the shipping I'm going to be paying, I made $42.97. Not exactly a blockbuster weekend, but for somebody who hasn't listed for four months, it's not horrible either. So now on to the fun stuff, shopping. I will admit that I go to thrift stores probably more often than I should, sometimes four or five times a week. Even if I only spend a few minutes in the store, it really re-energizes me. I already said I had a huge death pile, but I can't resist uh, walking into a good thrift store. So I'm going to give you some highlights of what I found at this Goodwill on Monday. First up is an Everlane dress. It is... A green company, Everlane, which does a lot of organics. They do less waste in their in their clothing. And this is an olive green shift dress. And it was $10. Originally, it sells for over $100. When I looked on comps on eBay, I saw that it was going for sometimes under $20, uh, a lot of times right at $30, and in rare occasions, $60+. Plus. Because of the really wide range of sale prices there, I decided that $10 was a little much to invest, so I skipped that one. Next up, I found a Millie of New York dress. Now, Millie's known for kind of really classy dresses where you could go to work and maybe out to cocktails afterwards. This is a brown dress that's a little bit boring. It did have cool big buttons on it, um, so I really liked that. It was priced at $10, but the comps are only between $10 and $20 on eBay. So again, I passed that one up. This is an Odile dress, which was originally sold at Anthropology, And this was an in-house brand. I don't think they're making this brand anymore. I could be wrong, but when I go into the Anthropology store, I just don't see this brand anymore. And this is a silk cotton blend, empire waist dress. It did have a velvet built-in belt that was really nice. They wanted $10 for it. But maximum on this brand, you're usually going to see on eBay around $20. So left that behind. This is a Club Monaco dress. Club Monaco is a very expensive brand when sold new. It also has a pretty good resale value online. Now this was new with tags, originally $198.50. It did go on sale at Club Monaco for $39. Here at the Goodwill, they wanted... $19.99, which I thought was just too much, even new with tags. Looking online, you can probably get resale value of maybe $30, sometimes a lot more. This one was just plain black though, and so that was kind of a detractor. It had a really cool cutout at the waist, but it just wasn't special enough for me to invest the $20 into it, so I passed. Alice and Olivia, I love this brand. 
Uh, it makes the best silk like cocktail dresses. They're usually pretty short, kind of geared towards a younger audience. Party dresses. This was new with tags, sold originally for $297. Now, I thought it was going to be $10. I did end up getting this, but when I took it up to the counter, the woman thought it was a shirt, so I was only charged $5.99 for it. And it looks like I can resell it online for hopefully between $40 and $50. Went to the pants section, and here I found some J brand pants. I really do like this brand. It's got a pretty good resale value at between $20 and $30 per pair. I found both a dark and a light wash. Both were $7.99. I decided to skip on these, however, because I've got a huge stack of J brand waiting for me at home and I don't necessarily need to add to it right now. If I go back and these are on half off, I probably will grab them. Next up, some designer jeans. These are uh, Moschino jeans. I hope I pronounced that right. They're a light blue, $7.99 at the Goodwill. Uh, these sell online for maybe $30 or $40 used. When I flipped these over, there was a stain in a very unfortunate place. And so I decided, even though they were designer, to uh, pass on these. Now, I did find some Acne Studio uh, jeans. Now, this is a Swedish brand and they do basics, but they do basics the best. And so these jeans are gray and distressed and looking a little sad, but for $7.99, I decided to absolutely get them because even in their used condition, I can hopefully resell them for $50 or perhaps even more. So those were a pickup for me. Next is this Theory Black Blazer. Theory used to do a little bit better in the resale world. This is an old tag, and because the brand is a little bit flooded, I did not grab this. Uh, it was going for $12.99 at the Goodwill. I could probably flip it for $25 to $35. I do have several at home that I don't have listed, and so I skipped that. If it does go on sale for half off, it probably is a pickup. Lovers and Friends is another brand that skews a little bit younger. This is such a bright print for this uh, mini skirt that has a built-in belt, and I decided to get it. It's kind of a boho-inspired print. It was full price at $5.99, which is a bit expensive for this brand, considering the fact that I can probably sell this for about $20, but I just liked the look, and if I do decide to cross-post, I could cross-post this on Poshmark, and probably make that $20 pretty easily. Hugo Boss is a brand that not a lot of people talk about in reselling, which I think is pretty funny because it is a very expensive brand. It is professional career wear and it is absolutely gorgeous. A blazer can go for $35 plus. I've sold dresses for over $60 in this brand before, so it's definitely something that I think you should pay attention to. This is a deep gray blazer, and it was for a $16.99, uh, which was just a little too much for me to invest right now. I left it behind, but I will be keeping my eyes out uh, later to see if it goes on sale. Sleeping on Snow is a brand that you're going to recognize from Anthropology. This is a short sleeve knit sweater. It is a tunic length with kind of a high low waist. It was a wool blend, and that to me, going into the summer months didn't bode too well. They wanted $5.99 for it. I did look up comps on eBay and I found the exact sweater selling, it just sold. It was listed for $24. A best offer was taken for $20. So there was profit to be had, but I just got, have a lot going on, so I decided to leave it behind. And you know how much I love vintage pieces, even though I am just keeping them in storage right now. This is a Givenchy wool brown knit shirt, and I really liked it. I know I just said that I didn't pick up something else because it was wool, but this is vintage designer. So of course I didn't pass it up at $6. And when I start my uh, Etsy store, that imaginary Etsy store that I've been talking about for so long, I'll probably end up listing this for around $35 to $40. So a good pickup, even if it has to go into storage a while, why I get my uh, myself together. 
Drew is a brand that I often see when I'm at Nordstrom Rack. This was a beautiful sweatshirt. It had uh, great embroidery on the front of it. Um, but the brand is kind of hard to find on eBay because when you type in, you know, Drew sweaters to look for comps or when somebody is shopping there, there's a lot of different sweaters that have Drew in the title or the style name. So it's a little hard to find. I instead went over to Poshmark to see um, how it was selling over there. I found this exact sweater or sweatshirt in a different color that is sold recently for $15. So at a $5.99 Goodwill price, I decided not to get this and left it behind. Vince is one of my all-time favorite brands just because it is so well made. This is a large stripe t-shirt with uh, a V and I decided to get it at $5.99. I'm going to try this on myself and hopefully it'll fit and I'll get to keep it and that'll be a staple in my summer wardrobe. If not, I could turn around and sell it between $15 and $20. But honestly, I would really like it in my wardrobe, so fingers crossed. We've seen this brand before, Acme Studios. Uh, this is a bit unusual for the brand because it is uh, abstract geometric print, kind of olives, browns, and blacks. They usually don't do something so busy, but $5.99 for this shirt, I did get it. Hopefully going to be able to sell it for between $35 and $40 online. Athleta is an excellent sportswear brand that tends to do very well online. This was a turquoise short sleeve shirt. It was $5.99 and I made a mistake. I left this behind and I realized afterwards I should have grabbed it because it's a pretty easy $20 to $25 flip and for $6 it really would have been worth my time. Next time I'm going to pick up the Athleta when I see it, especially if it's in really good condition. Adriano Goldschmidt is a brand that you're going to recognize mainly from jeans. When you're looking at jeans, it tends to be a pretty good flip for resale, but their shirts don't do as well. They're just not really known for it. This is a buffalo plaid shirt with ruffled sleeves for $6 at the Goodwill. It probably could uh, have been resold for $15 or $20, but it just wasn't a big enough uh, flip for me to have to deal with it. It would require a lot of steaming and a lot of prep work and it probably wouldn't have sold very fast just because the brand is not known for this type of piece. Escada is a designer brand, and if you can find a suit, like a wool suit or a silk shirt, you're looking at upwards of uh, $50, $100 for a suit, and so I would definitely recommend getting Escada. Whereas Escada Sport skews a little bit on the lower end, this was a wool hoodie, that had a little bit of embellishment. You could probably get away with selling this for around maybe 15 or 20. This cost $6 at the Goodwill. I decided not to, to go in on that, so I did leave it behind. The tag was also falling off a little bit, and I know me, and I'm probably not gonna take the time to fix that, and so again, I walked away. Soft by Joie is uh, one of the brands associated with Joie. I like the silk shirts, which are $25 plus for resale. This was a sweatshirt, which again, you could probably get $25 plus for it, maybe even $30. Uh, this is a black cowl neck, a really nice material, really soft. It was half off at $3. But when I took a closer look by the window, I, I oftentimes will go by the window with my items at the Goodwill just so I can see everything better to see if there's any flaws. I did see a white mark. It looked like it was sun bleached on the front and so I ended up leaving that behind. Mark by Marc Jacobs. If you find a purse by this brand, highly recommend getting it. If you find a jacket, especially something like leather or silk, highly recommend getting it. This is a black sweater with like a turquoise metallic trim on it. They wanted $12.99, which I thought was a little excessive by Goodwill standards. The price for this for reselling online is like $30 maybe. So even though Mark by Mark Jacobs is designer, I left that behind, did not pick it up. 
The Copals, I've been finding a lot of these different pieces. Uh, expensive brand, good for reselling, uh, $20 to $30. This, however, was a shell, and it was a kind of black lace, um, but there was something that was supposed to go underneath it, like a cami, and that was actually ripped out. And when I pulled up the sleeves to look to see if there was another piece involved, um, the person that ripped it out did not do it very nicely, which means kind of the seams were coming undone. It was $6. I left it behind. If it was in good condition or if it also had that um, under cami, I probably would have picked that up. Rebecca Taylor is a brand that I've talked about before, and I really like it, especially for selling on Poshmark. It seems to have a really good following over there. I thought this was a pretty basic black piece, and so I decided not to get it. Later on, uh, when I was kind of doing a little bit of research for the video, I realized I should have a pretty uh, easy time would be getting $25 or $30 out of it. It was $6. That is a good flip. I probably should have got that. If I go back to the store and see it, I will be picking it up. Save the Queen is a fantastic brand. It's uh, very busy. They do a lot of like nylon overlays uh, with, with bright colors and bright prints. And this particular piece was a tank with pink flowers. I should have got it. I knew this was a good brand. It was in good condition. I don't know what I was thinking. For $6, I could have grabbed it. Probably gotten $35 online. Again, my mistake, if I see this, I will be getting it. Sweaty Betty is a European uh, sportswear brand that does really well online. Their leggings especially and their hooded sweatshirts you can do very well with. This was $5.99 half off, so I paid $3 for it. I can get probably around $20 pretty easily. Sweaty Betty is one of those brands that flips very, very quickly. This mesh tank... Uh, again, not is not going to go for as much as something like the leggings would, but still something really great to have in your closet, and it is going to bring a lot of views. And any attention that you can bring to your store or your closet is always going to be a positive when you're selling online. And for the last piece that I found, this is a Hey Hey Anthropology utility jacket in gray, light gray, very long, and I normally would have picked this up without thinking for $10 saying, hey, this is anthropology. It's a light jacket, so something that you can wear through the spring and into the summer and even on cool nights in the summer if you wanted to. However, I have a similar piece right now in my store listed at $29.99 and it's getting absolutely no love. I think somebody offered like $8 for it. And so I was like, I've got one in my store. I don't need another one. Normally, I would say go for it, but on this particular day, I pass it up, and if I see it again, you know I'm going to break down, you know I'm going to get it, and I will be listing that. So just for future reference, you might be seeing some of these pieces again on another vlog. Now that we've seen a little bit more of the glamorous part of reselling, which of course is the shopping, I wanted to show you a little bit about what the majority of my reselling day looks like, and that is all about the listing. Because I want to expand my store, get my listings up, hopefully in four or five hundred uh, items in my store in the next little bit, I've decided to list at least 10 items a day, if not more. And so this requires lots of prepping items, photographing, uh, writing down measurements, editing the photos, and all of that good stuff. And so even though we like to see the haul videos and we like to see what people got, it, this is a much more realistic look at what your day is. It's, it's sitting down in your office or your eBay room and really, you know, popping these up on, on eBay, listing them and spending time doing that. So for today, what I decided to do is I like to list jeans um, together because I can photograph uh, a lot of them and then do the measurements and then do the listing. It's easier when you do it in bulk. I had a video that I posted yesterday about listing jeans online for resale if you want to go check that out. But I did want to tell you some of the pieces that I put up along with the prices that I listed them for just so you can get an idea of what I'm doing online and how and maybe that can help you.
So first up was a Citizens of Humanity uh, pair of light colored jeans that I listed for $29.99 plus $4.99 in shipping. A J. Crew high rise skinny that I listed for $19.99 plus shipping. DL1961 Coco Curvy Straight. I listed for $27.99 and shipping. I'm going to stop saying shipping. I'll just let you know. I do uh, list these at $4.99, mostly priority. So I'll just tell you the price that I listed from now on. Hudson Jean Nico Midrise Super Skinny at $29.99. Madewell 37s. These are an older cut pair of jeans, $29.99. Ammo jeans. Now, I know a lot of resellers really swear by these jeans. I'm getting no love so far after I posted these, so we'll see. I did list them high at $39.99, so, you know, maybe they'll maybe they'll take off, maybe they'll sell. We'll see about that. AG, which are Adriana Goldschmidt, that stilt cigarette leg for $29.99. And second pair of DL1961s, this one for $39.99. They are the Super high rise flare. Pair of J. Crew boot cut dark jeans for $16.99. Uh, seven for all mankind Mia cut, uh, new without tags, $29.99. So, what you're looking at now is everything that I listed on Monday, uh, not including best offers and fees. I listed $295 worth of goods. Now, I'm going to keep track of how fast these jeans sell, and also how fast my jeans, I'm gonna be listing them all week sell, to tell you what brands are moving the fastest and what styles are doing the best for me. So hopefully when you're outsourcing, you have a better idea of what might be right for your store or your closet. So I wanna thank you for joining me on my very first blog. I will be back tomorrow for everything that I'm doing on Tuesday. And I hope that you guys have a great day and uh, please leave any comments or suggestions down below. I love, love, love to hear from my viewers.